Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today, as promised, I'm gonna be giving you guys a video on the last 10 years of my relationship with Corey and our marriage and different things that I have learned. If you missed it, last week Corey posted a video on his, percep his perception as a man on how to handle a relationship. Um, it was definitely a really good video, so if you missed it, make sure you stop watching this one, go watch that first, and then come back here. So, Corey and I have been together for 10 years. We've been married for almost seven. And um, it has been a learning experience just like everything else. And if you were to know us back 10 years ago, um, you definitely would think that we were crazy for trying to be together and you would definitely not see us still married together with two kids and as happy as we are right now. So back then, Corey and I were alcoholics. Um, him more than me, I kind of just became an alcoholic. Guilty by association kind of thing. He drank a lot and I liked the nightlife. I liked to party, um, but drinking wasn't really my thing. But because he would drink all the time and I would get really annoyed with how he was when he was drunk, I would drink to get more drunk than him. And so for the first five or six years of our relationship, we were probably drunk <laughs> the entire time, which is why I think it worked um, because we had that common interest where we would both just like to go and party. And so um, we, if we were sober, we had very little in common. And I'm talking like, we don't like the same music. We don't like the same movies. We don't like to do the same things in our spare time. We don't have very many hobbies that are alike. We actually pretty much are different in every way you can think of. It's really crazy actually. Um, so oftentimes we would just drink and then it was just, you know, a grand old time, it was fun. Uh, we did fight a lot. We would bicker back and forth constantly. We still bicker a lot, but in a more controlled fashion. Um, but back then, like we were kind of shitty to be around sometimes because we were just we, we just weren't that great together. So for us to have lasted as long as we did, I don't even know how that happened. I think it comes down to Corey and I are both just extremely like hardworking people, and that even comes and translates into our relationship. So. When I got pregnant with Cruz, this was f five years ago now, um, it changed a lot of things. I obviously didn't drink that entire year and we had a few hiccups where Corey got really, really drunk and I would threaten to leave him. And I basically gave him an ultimatum of like, you stop drinking or I'm taking this baby and I'm bouncing. And it took a couple of those threats before he actually stopped and it was because he was in Florida um, back in the time back during this time he was an EOD technician and he was in Florida doing some training and he ended up just getting annihilated called me drunk from Florida and at this time Cruz was about eight or nine months old and I think at that point I had just I had just I was just done I was just ready for it to be over I was like I'm so over having to deal with this I need somebody that when I can trust that when they go on vacation that they're not going to be hammered the entire time like how do I know what you're doing it created a lot of trust issues um, so that was really hard but I gave him the ultimatum one last time and I said you either stop drinking or I'm taking cruise and I'm leaving and the difference between that time and the times before was that Cruz was there. Like, let's say most people when they're dating and it's not that great of a relationship, getting married just makes it worse. Having a baby on top of that just makes it like 10 times worse. With Corey and I, it's really weird because as we continue in our lives, things get better. So when we got married, it got better. When we had Cruz, it got better. And now we have two kids and it's getting better, but not without some hiccups along the way. So the difference of having Cruz there made a really big difference in Corey's perspective and he wasn't willing to lose Cruz. Back in the day before Cruz was there, he might have been willing to lose me because at the time I was either just his girlfriend or I was his wife, but we didn't see each other the way we see each other now. Now it's completely different and there's no way that I could see my life without him and vice versa. But back when you're dating it's and you're just in the beginning of your relationship and there's no kids, you can always you can always go you can always leave so Cruz made the biggest impact on his decision that day he decided I'm gonna get help and I'm gonna stop drinking and I said okay well prove it to me and since that day he has not had a sip of alcohol so I'm so happy and so proud of him um, and then I just did it just to be supportive because I'm not gonna drink in front of him and I don't care about it enough to to do it anyway so I just stopped too so that being said the drinking was a huge part of our relationship and so we went from being complete alcoholics to like what do we do now what do we do when we want to have fun what do we do 
like when people want to hang out with us or when we have free time or on vacations. It was a very, very hard adjustment in addition to Corey getting into a new field, in addition to having a new baby, living in Hawaii at the time. There was a lot of moving parts um, at the time, so it was, it was a lot of change as usual. We had to rethink a lot of things because it, it forced us to get to know each other. So it's kind of weird because at six, six years of our marriage or six years of our relationship, we were really just then forced to get to know each other on a sober level. And knowing somebody on a sober level is a lot different than just being trashed with them all the time. So it forced us to work through a lot of the stuff that we had as individuals. And it all started with fitness. You know, that's how we got into fitness was we went from drinking to bodybuilding and that's how that whole fitness thing started and also because I had cruise. So once we started to change our habits from living that life to a more fitness based life, little by little, we just started making small improvements. And a part of that was improving our relationship together. So cruise was definitely a game changer in our lives, not just because we had a baby, but because he is the reason we are where we are today in terms of our fitness, in terms of our success in business and our marriage, everything. That little boy has no idea the, the changes that he has made in our lives. And so basically the last six years before cruise, it was just a wild, wild. Realistically, the last five years have been amazing. They have been the best years of my life because I've been with Corey and because we have had a little family unit and we've been working every single day since the day we got sober to be better in our lives and be better as individuals so in turn we could be better together. And I think what happened was we had the lifestyle change in terms of our fitness and when you change your lifestyle for the better in that way. Yes, it's hard, but you're going to have positive things come from it. So it started to shift our mindset. It started to shift the way we viewed things. It started to shift who we hung out with. We started shifting all areas of our lives and that was really helpful for our relationship. And so individually, we spend a lot of time in our self-development and we're very, very aware of our own issues and things that we bring to the table that we need to work through and we are very communicative um, about pretty much everything now but it has taken us a really long time to get here and we have I know that Corey mentioned in his video we had um, we've been going to therapy going to therapy when I first got postpartum depression and that was after Stevie so four years after having Cruz was one that we went to therapy for the first time he that was because he didn't know how to help me when I was having my episodes of panic or when I was having really bad anxiety or he just didn't know how to respond to me because our communication styles are so so different. It's already difficult for him to for him. It's already difficult for him and I to communicate when I'm not an emotional wreck. So you throw that onto it with the adjustment of having from one kid to two kid buying a new gym. There was just so many things at that time that if of course it weighed down on us. And so I immediately reached out to my doctor for help for personal reasons. I was like, yo, I need some help. I need medication or I need therapy. I don't know what's happening, but I'm not okay. And then Corey got the help because he was like, yo, my wife is tripping. I don't know how to make her, make her happy. I don't know what to do. Everything I do is wrong. And so we got therapy individually, but we also got therapy together. And it was really, really a game changer because the therapist was able to make me feel not crazy by explaining to him why I was feeling the way I was and a lot of it being out of my control with my hormones and having the baby and then it allowed her to tell me what what can I do to make him understand better and give me what I what I've learned is you have to be direct and that was probably the best piece of advice out of therapy that I've gotten so far to date because if you are assuming that your husband knows what you want you're crazy and you're gonna you're gonna be waiting a long time before you get it and I know that because I've always done that I take everything personal expect you to to know what to do I drop cues thinking like okay obviously he knows what I need and that's just not the case that's just not how it works you have to be very direct so my therapist said make sure that when you want him to pick up cruise from school instead of saying oh I have to pick up cruise from school today and just start bitching about it say hey do you mind picking cruise up from school today if uh, there's a bunch of dishes in the sink and I'm bitching about how this house is a mess and I'm the only one that cleans and yada, 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 instead of doing that, just say, hey, do you think you could get the dishes for me, please? And nine out of 10 times, if not 10 out of 10 times, he responds with, yeah, absolutely. And it's that easy. But it took 
like how long for me to learn it took it took me so long to learn that if you just ask for what you want or you tell your your significant other what it is that you need or how to respond to you then they can deliver it but if you try to give them this guessing game like you're going to be sitting in that that place for a very long time and again people communicate very differently so you have to tell people what you want sometimes and that this goes for any relationship but you can't expect people to know what you want and what you need and how to respond to you so for me, I have to be direct and I have to say, this is what I need from you. And this includes when I'm feeling like if I'm having anxiety or anything. Like recently, there was an episode on November 15th specifically that I had like five panic attacks in that day and Corey and I were fighting and he triggers my anxiety more than anybody. So if Corey and I are not well, I am not well and not well, like really bad. He has the ability because of how much I love him um, to impact me very, very heavily. So we were arguing that day and it just made me more anxious and it just, it really shot me down this like dark place. And one thing led to another and I ended up having a really bad anxiety attack and I had to like call the Kaiser crisis line and I had to go get medication and see a therapist that day. Like it was just a very traumatic experience <laughs> to say the least. Um, but during that time, I, he didn't know like what was happening because we had gone so long without having any bouts of anxiety or depression and everything was kind of back to normal once I had the medication. So it kind of like started to, to dabble into our lives again. And so we weren't sure how to handle it. I was trying to figure it out from a standpoint of like, what's happening to me? Why am I feeling this way out of nowhere? And he's trying to figure out on his end, like, why is she being like this all of a sudden? And so we were just like bickering back and forth instead of taking a step back and saying, what's causing this? Like, where's this coming from? So with Corey, that day with Corey, I had to really check myself and be like, okay, once I was able to calm down, I sent him a text and I was like, look, I know that I'm being crazy right now. I don't know why, it feels really real and I just need you to tell me that it's okay and that you're gonna be there for me. I don't need you to fix it. I don't need you to do anything else. Please just treat me as good as you treated me when you found out I had postpartum and you were you basically dropped everything for me. That's what I need from you. And the response was done and he did. A year ago, I would have just continued to bitch and cry and moan and expect him to just pick up the cues and a year later, now I'm able to tell him, like, this is exactly what I need from you. And then he can deliver. The The whole divorce thing, so Corey and I, when we were dating, um, obviously there wasn't a divorce, but when we initially got married before cruise, I'm pretty sure we would threaten divorce, like if we got into a fight or whatever, and we obviously never did anything about it. But once we had cruise and we really got into this really good place in our lives, we never have threatened divorce. Um, that's definitely been like the D word, like you don't say it unless you really mean it. But that just goes to show how bad things got just a couple of weeks ago or a month ago now-ish. Um, and I should have kind of picked up on these red flags. Looking back now, I can see it. But, you know, while I'm in it, I couldn't see it. But there were a lot of little things that I was creating in my head. And I was nitpicking at him. And I was starting to get really insecure. And I was getting jealous. I just started to build up these stories in my head. And... On the receiving end, Corey was just like so confused as to what was happening. And I'm over here creating these stories in my head and I think that they're real. So I'm just like being a total biatch to him. I am nitpicking and I'm bitching at him and he can't do anything right. It's just like this really, it's just this really shitty time. And um, we would go a couple, like a couple of hours without talking to each other. And it was just really awkward. There was a lot of little red flags that I should have picked up on that I didn't at the time. Um, but it just got to be so bad that I actually checked into a hotel and I have never done that before, but I checked into a hotel and I just was like, I need to be away from him. And he was like, go for it. So we were both like, just needed some space. And I was so was like, I was, I'm still surprised that I did it because it's something that I never have done before. Um, but I went to a hotel and I picked up Stevie, he took cruise and I stayed in the hotel and then we kind of fought via text. And then I called him that night and we talked and it was kind of like the conversation didn't end well. I hung up on him and I was crying and I cried myself to sleep. And then the next day, he said to me, he had said to me that the only way that he was going to talk to me is if it was in front of a therapist because I was being delusional and he just wasn't going to even entertain anything that I was saying, which looking back is fair. So 
that day um, I had messaged a bunch of therapists and I had found Jessica who I've talked about and I sent her a text and I was like we really really need you like we're in a really shitty fight right now and I need somebody to talk to with we need somebody to talk to so she scheduled us the next day that whole day we kept trying to like communicate but we would end up fighting like it was something as little as he asked me to go to lunch I said yes I texted him when I was ready to go to lunch he had a client I was like well why wouldn't you tell me that you have a client because now I can't go to lunch with you do you not really want to go to lunch with me it was like so dumb like that so we, we bickered all throughout the day got to the point where we we're like look let's just not talk until three o'clock when we have our therapy session so we did we go to the therapy session he pulls up like I give him a hug it's really awkward and like we're just in a really weird place it's very unfamiliar and uncomfortable and we have our session and it just felt like we needed we both needed to just like release everything and have a little bit of guidance on like what the fuck do we do I don't know where all of this is coming from I don't know how to handle it there's so much pressure from every direction and so our therapist was really able to kind of pinpoint different things that we can do and it all started with you got to take care of yourself you have to control your own actions that you cannot control anybody else's actions and if you both can take ownership of yourselves then collectively you will do well together that was really hard for me because owning up to stuff I guess isn't really I'm not that great at it um, I'm working on it for sure Corey's definitely gotten better and we both are so headstrong and we can be so combative that it makes it very difficult at times but we were able to even when we were able to leave that session and we felt better, we hugged, we gave each other a kiss and everything was really great, you know, for the next like 48 hours. And because we were kind of on a high from therapy, you're like, okay, everything's gonna be okay. My anxiety started to go away. Um, so things started to look up, but it wasn't, I mean, it lasted maybe like three or four days and then we got back into these bickering little fights and it just got to the point where we were like, okay, we need, we can't stop therapy. So we continued to go and we still continued to go. But um, I think that what really helped is the, the fact that we're both willing to really work on ourselves. So I decided to see a therapist outside of our marriage counseling, um, just to work through whatever it is that causes these things for me. And I know that it does have to do with postpartum, but I also know that I'm extra vulnerable to postpartum depression because of, I guess, the stuff internally that I haven't dealt with yet. From what my therapist says is she says that I have abandonment issues and that I have trust issues and insecurities because of maybe my childhood or things that have happened to me or there's various reasons we're a product of our environment and so I need to work through that before I can expect Corey to work through my things he's got to take care of himself I take care of myself and then because we're both adults and we love each other and we're gonna be together we will take care of each other it's gonna happen so Corey and I have been really good like really good I mean I'm talking better than we have in our entire marriage together um, since therapy and since we've been going consistently it was like we just needed somebody to just sit us down and say look you guys are both doing your best this is what she this is how she feels this is how he feels this is how you guys need to handle it when you give us both instruction we follow it it does really help that I haven't had any anxiety or um, like panic attacks or the depression isn't really there because when it's there, it's very difficult for me to control it. So he has to be the strong one and he has to be the one that's like, okay, she's in, she's in a mode. Our therapist told us to say a trigger word. So like if I say pineapple, that means like, yo, go back to like postpartum depression days where you were just there for me. But it's just, he has a hard time like differentiating between are you just being crazy are you gonna start your period are you being emotional for no reason like he doesn't know because it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf with me because I'm always emotional I'm a naturally very emotional person and then you add all of these extra things and it just makes it even harder so I'm gonna be more clear with him and say hey it's more than just me being a bitch and he's gonna be receptive and be like I got you what, what how can I help you and knowing that he has my back like that it it automatically releases so much of my stress and emotional baggage that I'm feeling at the time so I think that people think that we have this like perfect marriage and I don't know if it's because maybe we make it look like that on social media but I, I think that we are pretty authentic on social media I am obsessed with him I love him I'm more than obsessed with him like I would marry him a hundred times but not without having to go through all of that other stuff it's almost because we've gone through so much shit together that 
I will fight till the end for him because he's worth it to me and he's given me two beautiful children that I love so much that I will tear my, myself to pieces and rebuild myself in order to make our marriage work. And the reason it works is because he would do the same thing. And it's not, it's not a bad thing to take ownership. It's not a bad thing to be like, yo, we need some help. We're all trying to learn. And it's very hard when you have so many different things happening at the same time and pressure of, of being successful and having businesses and being good parents and being there for our kids. And there's just so many contributing factors that I learned I just need to be kinder to myself and be more patient with myself and with other people because we're all in this just trying to survive at the end of the day. So. It's, it's okay to need help. We're constantly working on ourselves and reaching out for help when we need it. We read self-development books. We, we do all the things. We've gotten really great at communicating, but again, we're not naturally compatible. So we do have to work, I would say, a little bit harder than your um, average couple. But that just goes to show that if we can do it, I promise you guys, anybody can do it. You just have to take ownership for your own stuff and you have to be consistent with it. The problem is most people want to do it but they don't do it at the same time so one person's like 110 percent in and then their spouse isn't and so it makes it difficult so that person reverts back to their old tendencies while this person's like okay i'm on board now and it's like you have to get on the same page and be like ready set go we're gonna do this and if even if he starts to fall off i have to guide him back and say remember when we talked about this or remember that this is what you told me to do the next time this happened so i have to be strong instead of just wanting to cry or get mad I have to fight those urges and I have to reel him back in because it's like we're retraining how we work together as a unit and he does the same thing there have been times where during my therapy sessions she said you know make sure that if you feel that she's on edge or she's starting you see triggers that you kind of just like put your hand on her on her knee and just be like hey let's just take a couple of deep breaths and while you're in therapy and I'm calm and he's calm that sounds like a great idea but when I'm in a state of anxiety or panic attack and he puts his hand on my knee and says you just need to take a couple deep breaths i look at him and i'm like are you fucking crazy i can't take a couple of deep breaths right now and i just start like freaking out on him so i have to be strong enough to be like okay he's right he's right i have to take a couple deep breaths and then i have to take a couple deep breaths and i have to that's the only way that it's gonna work is if you fight those urges and you have to do it in the moment you have to correct that mindset in the moment and it's hard it's really fucking hard you guys like I, I it's really hard but my purpose behind it is so strong that I'm willing to go through it and I'm gonna fuck up I'm gonna mess up and there are gonna be times where I still flip my shit on him but what I've learned is this has happened a few times I will come back to him and be like look I'm really sorry I know that you were trying to be there for me. I know that you were trying to help me and I was really snappy at you. So I just want to let you know that I appreciate that you did that. And that was my bad. And he's like, cool, let's move on. But if I acknowledge that it was my behavior, it's going to make him feel like, okay, I'm going to do that again. But if you are just constantly like reverting back to your old behavior, or you're not even acknowledging when they're making, when they are doing the right thing, they're not going to know to continue to do it. I would definitely, um, compare it to like having a puppy or something like you want to reward the positive behavior and ignore the bad behavior so when Corey does something that I really like or I found it to be very helpful I will literally say thank you so much for doing that that made me feel this way I love when you're doing that or he's said something or done something and I was like that I need you to do that more and he's like oh okay cool you know so he'll continue to do it and it works for me too he needs to give he needs to tell me what i do well for instance i'll give you an example he i had asked him can you help clean up the kitchen and um he said yeah so i had left i come back and the kitchen wasn't really like super clean but he's like hey I, I tried to clean up the kitchen and i'm sorry like i got busy with this this and that whatever and i was like oh it's fine it's cleaner than it was and i like walked away and that statement alone for whatever reason has it just made him so happy he was like wow she didn't get mad at me for not being perfect she, instead she acknowledged that i did something right and for me that was a, an eye opener because he oh he said it to me he said like hey when you said that to me it really made me feel good so thank you and i was like fuck you yeah, i'm gonna do that more <laughs> you know so it's just a matter of practicing and just knowing that no, no relationship is perfect and if you think that there are people out there with perfect relationships you're high because there's not and we all have to work so hard at it um, but like I said now Corey and I are in such a better place but we still continue to do our therapy every other week because even when we're in our best state of mind even when we're in our best in our relationship 
there's always going to be hiccups and we need to be prepared for those hiccups because I, I refuse to let our marriage go to shit because of my ego or my pride and he feels the same way and you get two people that really want to work on themselves and are really willing to put in the work then you have success. Corey's video is a lot more educational and like there's more tools and stuff mine's just kind of more of a story time and kind of giving you what I've learned but it's just it's been a process of 10 years of getting to know this person and even 10 years of getting to know them I still don't know everything and I'm still learning and the Corey that I had 10 years ago is not the Corey that I have today. It's complete, he doesn't have the same Alicia as he did back then. Every single day that we move forward, we are evolving into a different person. And so we need to be able to handle each other on those different levels. And the only way we can do that is by working on ourselves and controlling what we do as individuals. One of the biggest pieces of advice that I could give to you is there's no shame in admitting that you need help and there's no shame in putting your ego aside and telling your significant other exactly what you need. I can understand where the problems are gonna come in and that's where the significant other isn't receptive or doesn't want to see, seek a therapist or doesn't wanna put in the effort that you're putting in. Those are gonna be things that are hard. But you gotta remember, like think back to when Corey and I were first dating like, and we, when we were first married, we were at different levels at all times and we were kept trying to align and it just like wasn't working, but we didn't quit and we kept trying. And then it's like once we got a clear state of mind, once we got sober and we started focusing on fitness, it just made it easier for us to align. And even now, we still get off of alignment at times. We still find ourselves in different areas, but we're able to kind of ground ourselves again and then move forward. So I understand that it can be difficult when your significant other is not game or isn't on board as much as Corey is, but that doesn't mean that it gives you the right to stop trying. That's still your obligation. That's your job is to take care of yourself and do what's best for you so you can be a better mom, a better wife, a better husband, a better dad. So you can do those things. You're responsible for yourself and your own actions. You cannot blame anybody but yourself if you are not a happy person right now because you have to be making those changes for yourself and you need to be seeking help to make those changes. There is no such thing as, well, I grew up this way or I, did, I got told this. There's no such thing as excuses when it comes to self-development. We're all brought up differently. Some of us were brought up in a really shitty environment. Some of us were brought up in a great environment. Some of us had shitty role, uh, role models. Some of us had great role models. There's just so many variables. You can't use that to determine your future. What you can do is control the now. And that's all you can control. And if you can grasp that idea and actually implement it and change that mindset, then you will have a very happy, happy life. It's not gonna go without hiccups. It's not gonna go without trials and tribulations. It's gonna be a challenge. Everything is, but it's gonna suck if you don't get the help and it's gonna suck if you are getting the help. It's just gonna suck less if you get the help. So you, you pick your heart. Eventually, it won't suck anymore and it'll be a really great relationship. Just end up being happier because along the way you're improving yourself. If you don't get help and you do the alternate route, then along the way you're getting worse and worse and worse and worse and eventually you either end up breaking up with the person or leaving the person or hating yourself or you've just developed all these really bad habits. There's just nothing good that's gonna come from that. You want to focus on the things that you can control and you want to better your life every single day. We have one life to live. You're gonna be with one partner. Why not enjoy it? Why not love that person and, and can't wait to get home to them and want to spend time with them and have kids You with need them. to feel so confident in yourself because of how much work that you've put in that you feel so good about yourself that you know I'm bringing something to this table. And if he does the same thing, then you guys will both have something to offer. But it can't be when you feel like it. It has to be all the time and you have to be very consistent with it. It is just like fitness. You cannot work out a couple of times and get a six pack. You have to consistently work out and you have to change your lifestyle and your habits and all of that and eventually you will have it. At the end of the day, you just gotta put in the work. I am much more of a rambler when I tell stories and when I'm talking about things because I talk from the heart and I just kind of go on a tangent. Um, Corey's a little bit more logical and he's a little bit more methodical when it comes to his teaching. So mine is just more like, I just want you guys to see the other side of it. Um, Corey and I will be honest, completely honest with everything in our relationship. We, we've come so far and I have no shame whatsoever in anything that I've done in my life because it has taught me to be a better person and it has made me become who I am today and I love who I am today.
and I love being with Corey. I love the man he's, he's become. So it's something to celebrate at the end of the day. It's an opportunity for me to share so that maybe somebody out there can see my video or see his video and be like, look, I can do this too. If she can do it and she has completely changed her life in the last five years and we've changed our marriage in the last five years and that includes our careers, everything. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but like I never even worked out until I was 28 years old and now I own a gym and I've been a personal trainer for four years. So it only takes a short amount of time for complete change to happen, but you have to be willing to put forth that time. So I was 28 years old. I'm 33 right now. From 30, sorry, from 28 to 33, that's been the only time in our marriage and in my life where I have been genuinely happy. That's not that long ago. That's five years ago. So that just goes to show that you can start right now and in three, four, five years from now, you can have a completely different life. And I think that you should see that as an opportunity and don't see it as, oh my God, it's gonna be five years. See it, oh my gosh, I can change my life in the, in the next five years and be a completely different person for the better. That's something to celebrate. So hopefully you guys got something from that video. Um, I really appreciate everybody's support and the comments that you guys give on our videos and for watching Corey's video. We really just wanna show you guys that nobody's perfect and we're here working our asses off to be together and to run our businesses and take care of all ch our children. And we do have fights just like everybody else. We do say things we don't mean just like everybody else, but we are working towards being better. And right now I can say that we're the happiest that we've ever been and that feels really good. So I'm glad that we're able to share this with you guys. If you want more videos like this, please let me know and give me your thoughts. What do you guys think about it? Comment below. See you in the next one. Bye.